Hello, I'm Rod Pinkston, and welcome to another episode of Jaeger Pro. There are specific gate designs which are more effective than others, so I'll cover gate selection in our basic training segment. I'll also remove another sounder from this property using the most efficient process and products while teaching the art and science of integrated wild pig control. Integrated wild pig control is a strategic approach using a series of innovative control methods and technologies implemented in a specific sequence based on seasonal food sources. Emphasis is placed on efficient removal of entire sounders at one time to eliminate escapes, method education, and future reproduction. Control strategies must continually change throughout the various seasons to effectively target adaptive survivors. Trap gates are manufactured in a variety of widths, sizes, and styles. The following photos demonstrate four different types or categories. This is an example of a wooden drop gate, a root gate, a swing gate, and a saloon gate. Root, swing, and saloon designs are also referred as continuous catch gates, since they are hinged at the top or side to allow one-way entry. Those trusting the continuous catch theory believe any pig still outside the trap enclosure once the gate has been triggered will continue to push through and enter the closed one-way gate. However, academic research proves continuous catch gates are ineffective at capturing a substantial number of additional pigs after the gate is closed. The Auburn University study demonstrated only 11 of 222 opportunities were effective, which is less than 5% success. Uneducated juveniles are more likely to enter a one-way gate than adults. Continuous catch designs also offer a potential for pigs to escape from the trap enclosure, as demonstrated by these three adults. This Christmas Eve footage from 2009 shows two adult sows testing and avoiding continuous catch saloon doors on a four-foot wide gate, while young, inexperienced juveniles pass through the same threshold without hesitation. Standard gate sizes are built 3 feet wide by 3 feet tall. There is a total of 11 pigs in this sounder, and only 4 of them will cross the gate threshold. It is impossible to accomplish 100% capture success when only 36% will enter. The other 7 were not born as trap resistant pigs, they were taught this behavior from a prior experience. I'll show you an example of how trap avoidance becomes a learned behavior. Watch the reaction of the pigs outside the trap enclosure. One adult and five juveniles were captured, while 20 plus pigs were educated to avoid future metal contraptions. This landowner argued that his trap was successful because he caught a sow and eight pigs. <laughs> but there were 22 pigs in the sounder. Capturing nine of 22 is only 41% success, which means he educated more pigs than he caught. Internet forums are filled with photos like this. A single sow with 12 juveniles captured by a narrow gate using a tripwire. Narrow thresholds require excessive time periods to condition pigs to enter and are notorious for only capturing juveniles and a small percentage of adults. Narrow gate designs are inefficient products to accomplish the stated performance standard of 100% success while expending the least amount of fuel, time, labor, and money. As with all trapping efforts, there are specific products which are more effective than others. Maximum success is accomplished by ensuring all pigs are inside the trap enclosure prior to triggering the gates closed. Feral pig behavior and intelligence dictates users must employ larger trap sizes with wider gate thresholds to improve capture efficiency and performance. Remember, the gate opening on the northern neighbor's trap was only two feet wide and failed to make a single capture. Pigs would only feed to the gate threshold and would not enter. For size comparison, I put a standard 32 inch gate next to our 96 inch mine gate. Our gate is exactly three times wider, but the actual opening is only 24 inches, which means our eight foot opening is exactly four times wider. Remember our results from changing the gate width 
and height on the neighbor's property? I conditioned his first sounder to the trap during episode three on the first night. I also conditioned 11 of 12 the first night during episode six and would have accomplished the same goal with all 12 pigs during episode seven without the neighbor's helpful interference. Let's compare our field data in a side-by-side -side gate assessment. The neighbor's trap was a two foot wide drop gate and our mine trap employs an eight foot wide drop gate. The neighbor removed zero pigs, which failed the performance standard. He is a no-go for being untrained. The process of trapping is still a go, since it is winter and pigs can be conditioned to automatic feeders with digital timers. The two foot wide drop gate failed to make any captures. The mine trap captured 31 of 32 for a 97% capture rate, but we removed all 32 targeted pigs for 100% removal success with all goes, despite the neighbor's interference. This is a reason performance-based decisions are important. The most efficient design documented during my 13 years in business has been an eight foot wide threshold designed as a drop gate. I define efficient as the fewest days needed to condition entire sounders to cross the gate threshold. The wide threshold gives adults confidence to feed sideways and immediately trust the enclosure without feeling confined or constricted. Trap gate decisions should always be based on performance, not cost or convenience. Selecting the most efficient gate, capable of conditioning all age classes in the shortest time possible, is critical to implementing a successful integrated wild pig control program. To view the entire 30 minute episode, please tune in to RFD TV. Our weekly show airs Tuesday nights at 9.30 p.m. Eastern, 8.30 p.m. Central. Channel 231 on Dish Network and Channel 345 on DirecTV.